Part four starts with something very important, one of the main roles of session manager, which is adaptations. Session manager is able to modify not only the dial number or dialing number, but also it's able to modify some zip headers. Not all of them, but some of them. Mm. Let me actually go to, ah, I'm not gonna go to full screen, this takes a lot of time. So, not only allows you to modify the uh, dial, in, uh, dial number, and actually this should say dial slash dialing, you know, because it allows you to modify both the Dennis and the Annie. Okay, so it's not only the dial number. But not only that, but it also allows you to modify the zip message format, which means that it allows you to modify certain zip headers. Let's see, this slide actually has some animation, so let me go to full screen. And this is just it's kind of a simple animation, just showing you why would you need to adapt a number. So in this case, Session Manager receives a request with this dial number, and if Session Manager routes the request based on a routing policy to a destination, but if the destination is expecting a format different, you know, then the destination is not gonna, doesn't know what to do with that because it doesn't comply with the type of format that destination is expecting. So that would be an example of why you wanna adapt the number before you send it to the final zip entity, to the zip entity as destination. You see, so in this case, you just apply an adaptation that modifies the number, it removes the zero and adds a plus 44, pretty much. And now the destination knows what to do with that number. So that would be an example of a digit conversion. Every time you wanna apply an adaptation in Session Manager, you need to work with adapters, some adaptation adapters. The one that you see here in this page is a kind of a generic adapter that allows you to modify certain things. One of them is digits, as the name implies, because the name of the adapter is a digit conversion adapter. So you're able to modify digits, meaning that you can insert or remove digits, but not only that, but it also allows you to modify certain zip headers related to domain names. So it allows you to modify domain names in the from, PAI, and history header. And it also allows you to modify domain names in the request URI, contact header, to header, message account, and refer to header. Those are the headers that you're able to modify, period. If you need to modify some other headers, maybe you cannot modify them with session manager. But normally, these headers are the headers that you end up having to modify, you know? I said the first day that the SBC is more flexible when modifying headers. It allows you to modify more zip headers than Session Manager does. Okay, so Digit Conversion Adapter. That's the name of the adapter. Adaptations sit here, right before zip entities, <coughs> right, and after locations. The reason why they're there is because when you create an adaptation, you need to assign it to a zip entity. Otherwise, you did nothing. So you create your adaptation and you assign it to a zip entity. So that every time a call goes through that zip entity or comes from that zip entity, the adaptation is involved. And it really depends if you configure the adaptation as an incoming adaptation or outgoing adaptation. And that's what we're gonna be about to see. Well, not yet, but here's a slide where you get to see a lot of adapters that Avaya has to integrate with other vendors. Again, the adapter that I show you, the digit conversion adapter, that's kind of a generic adapter that allows you to do some generic things. But if you're trying to integrate with a specific vendor, then you wanna use a specific adapter you know, for that vendor. Remember that every vendor uses SIP in a different way. For example, here's an example of how you would to, or what adapter you would need to do if you want Session Manager to connect to the Nortel PBX, the CS1K. 
So you would have to create an adaptation invoking the CS1K adapter. And that's pretty much it. And then the adapter does some things. You, I mean, you don't get to see what's doing. All you need to do is configure it. But the adapter removes some things, adds some things, you know, to the zip message so that CM is able to communicate with the CS1K. Notice in this example, they, for example, tell you that if CS1K is trying to go to CM, in the CS1K, in the invite, there is this phone context equal CDP.UDP that only makes sense for Nortel. If CM receives the invite just like that, CM is going to get it confused and doesn't know what to do with the invite. That's a Nortel thing. So session manager needs to remove that piece from the invite and that's what it does. That's what the adapter does and then you no longer see that portion in the invite. Now if it's going from CM to CS1K, session manager will add that portion to the invite so the CS1K understands the message. So that CS1K adapter that's drawn there on on the pipe to communication manager, it, it does work both directions. Yeah. But it stays in that location, so before, so the call from um, the uh, via H323 over to that CS1000, is it adapted before it gets to the session manager, really, or at the front edge of the session manager? It, it could be adapted, you're meaning in this direction, right? Yeah, well, no, in, the, in that direction, it looks like it's on the way out of the session manager. On this way, it's That's up to in. you. Is you're, that visual? You're actually the one who decides uh, where to do it. You could configure, let's say it's coming from the CS1K and going to CM, you know, that direction. Yeah. So you do the adaptation in, C in session manager, and you're the one who decides if you want to configure as an inbound adaptation. You would do it here, right before routing is evaluated in session manager or as an outbound adaptation here r after routing has been applied in session manager. So these canned adaptations, like the CS1K adaptation, is it bidirectional? Or would, would you apply two adaptations? One for CM to CS and one for CS to CM? Would there be two? Ad if you want those two PDXs to talk to each other both ways, would you actually have two separate adaptations? Yeah. One associated to the CS1K, one associated to CM. Yeah. And they both be CS1000 adapters. Uh, okay, those would be, that's a good question. Those would be. Because there's not really a CM adapter that converts things to CM and from CM, CS1000. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So it should be the same. Let me think about it. Same adapter. <coughs> the same adapter no. that acts differently on each side? Or? Yeah. So it, actually, I said it wrong. It's going to be one adapt, one adaptation, one adaptation associated to the SIP entity, CS, the, to the CS1K, but configured as inbound, inbound and outbound. That's, that's what it's going to be. So every time the CS1K places a call, Session Manager modifies that, and every time Session Manager needs to send something to the CS1K, Session Manager modifies that. So it's gonna be one adaptation, one adapter, but that adaptation will have an inbound rule and an outbound rule. Okay. That's how it's gonna work. Here we have a Cisco. That's wrong. <laughs> That's immoral. That's a Cisco phone powered by Avaya. <laughs> but this is a little bit different. You're just mixing stuff here because what happened is that they just load SIP firmware in that phone so that it can register them with session money, you know? <laughs> another thing, another thing is having a Cisco PBX trying to communicate with session money. That's thing. That, that's when you need the adapter. <laughs> and let's see why some of the things that the Cisco adapter does is let's see some Cisco phones require an accept header an accept header in an inbound invite so session mark acts the accept header some Cisco phones do not typically accept zip messages beyond 2400 to 2800 bytes 
So session map makes the message smaller by stripping some headers. The headers that it stripped are some via headers and record route headers. Some Cisco firmware versions prevents them from supporting third-party proxy servers. And therefore, the Cisco phones cannot subscribe to any event packages, but they still spec an out of dialogue notify to update things like the message waiting lamp status. <laughs> Very specific. So what Sejimar does on behalf of the user is, sorry, uh, Sejimar sends a subscribe on behalf of the Cisco endpoint. Very specific. In real life, all you need to do is create a zip, zip entity for your Cisco M, uh, PBX right. and uh, create an adaptation, invoke the Cisco adapter, and that's it. The Cisco adapter will do all of this stuff for you. Go ahead, Jesse. Is there new adaptations that come up, like the patches or anything, or is that it? it? With every release and sub-release, there is a new adapter, you new know, adapter. or a new integration. Yeah. If you uh, get to see, I mean, notice to, to the naked eye, I mean, the, the messages look probably exactly the same. But if now that we know what they told us in the previous slide, we know that after session manager receives the message, it adds an accept header. Notice that the message also looks smaller because there are some via headers and that there are some via headers and record route headers that are stripped, removed. Uh, that's it. I mean, but the truth is that you get to see these two messages in real life; they probably look exactly the same to you, right? But that's what the Cisco adapter does. What two types of adaptations can Session Manager perform? Digit conversion and zip message modification. Pretty much modifying zip headers. Now, adaptation is scenario. So what we're gonna be doing, or what you're gonna be doing, now let me explain it with another slide. This one is better. So right now you're able to call from a zip phone in your lab to a zip phone in the other lab, right? What, what I want you to do in this exercise is instead of dialing the other lab extension number, I want you to dial star nine and the other lab extension number. You should go, I mean, that should go to your session manager and your session manager should remove that star nine. And then, yeah. Good. I should remove the star nine and then route to the other session manager. Now, stay here with me. When you create the adaptation, you'll have to apply the adaptation to a zip entity. Okay, remember that. Otherwise, you did nothing. Okay. Now, adaptations. You go. To, if you want to create a new adaptation, you go there, click on new, and here's where you specify the adapter. I don't see my cursor, but. You know, new module name is where you specify the adapter that you want to use. Mm -hmm. In previous releases, believe it or not, you had to type the name of the adapter. That was painful. Because imagine, for example, the digit conversion adapter. It had to be capital D, capital C, capital A. And chances were that everything was well configured, but there was some misspelling in that name, and then nothing would work. Now Avaya has a drop-down menu, as it should have been all the time, where you select the adapter from the drop-down menu. Now, this is one of the most important slides with adaptation, so pay attention here. When you configure an adaptation, you need to decide if you want to make it work as inbound or outbound. Inbound for call, calls, uh, if it's inbound, it's a digit conversion for incoming calls to session manager. If it's outbound, it's a digit conversion for outgoing calls from session manager. Well, it doesn't need to be just a digit conversion. It could be a, do a domain name modification. But again, you could make it work as incoming for calls uh, going to session manager or outgoing for calls coming from session manager. The important thing for you to know is that if you make it work as incoming, the adaptation is applied first and then routing is applied. On the other hand, you make it work as outbound, you know, outgoing. Routing is applied first, and then the adaptation is applied. Okay? 
I mean, an easy way to remember this. Just remember that routing is in the middle. So what I'm saying is that if you have your session manager here, come on. You have your session manager here and it receives a request. The first thing that is evaluated is an incoming adaptation. Then, routing is evaluated. And then, an outgoing adaptation. Okay? then it goes out of session man. It's pretty much the same thing that Slack says. So if it's an incoming adaptation, the adaptation is applied first, then routing. If it's an outgoing adaptation, routing is applied first, then the outgoing adaptation. Okay? I think that this is a little bit easier to remember than what you see there. Would it be possible for an adaptation? Uh, hope that it wouldn't occur, but we run into all kinds of creative customers. Um, uh -huh. You could have an adaptation that did do both, that for some reason wanted an incoming adaptation to allow some existing routing to work, but then also outgoing adaptation to... Block it? Uh, to apply, <laughs> no, to make it possibly uh, compatible with a uh, Cisco at the other end. Yeah. So, I mean, so there could be incoming adaptation yeah. to change what you're going to route because that would change before routing and then after routing it turns out that's a Cisco number so we got to do that header. Yeah, yeah and this is precisely what I was saying with the CS1K example where I was saying hey you would if, you, if this is your CS1K you would have one adaptation associated to the CS1K and you need to make it work as both incoming and outgoing you know, so it would be the same adaptation, and within the adaptations you have some rules for incoming and some rules for outgoing. Can we see those canned adaptations and all of their rules and yeah. we can break them out? Yeah, <coughs> yeah. Same thing for CM, you'll see later, if you have here a CM, you create an adaptation to CM for when calls are going to CM from session matter and another it's in, it's within the same adaptation, you have some other rules for when calls are coming from CM and going to session one. Okay? Now, you know the exercise. Now, what we're trying to accomplish, stay here with me because this is important. What you're trying to accomplish in the exercise You want to have a SIP phone. You're going to be dialing from one of your SIP phones. You have your session manager, the session manager in your lab. And you have another session manager in another lab with its own SIP phone, right? And you're going to be dialing star 9 and the other lab extension number. Mm -hmm. Now, I said that when you create an adaptation, you need to assign it to a SIP entity. Otherwise, you did nothing. You need to assign it to a SIP entity. Let me ask you one question. From this session manager perspective, let's say this is your session manager, and this is the other lab session manager. From your session manager perspective, how many SIP entities you have from this session manager perspective? One. one. This is not a, a SIP entity, right? We said that endpoints are not SIP entities. So one, which one? This one. So the, the fact that you only have one SIP entity and it's that one is going to force you to work with an outgoing adaptation. Because you'll have to create the adaptation and apply it to this session map, the other lab session map. Okay? Yeah. Notice that if the exercise was different, if the exercise was not a call coming from a SIP phone, but let's suppose for a second that you at a CM here, and an H223 device. 
if the exercise was like this, you would have more flexibility because you could configure the adaptation as an inbound adaptation, incoming adaptation to session manner and apply it to this CM, or as an outbound adaptation and apply it to the other lab session manner. You see? Mm. But the fact that we only have, the fact that the call is coming from this zip phone, and then the fact that there's only this zip entity from this session my perspective forces us to apply the adaptation to that other zip entity. And it forces us to make it work as outgoing. Make what? sense? Or not really? Why wouldn't you be, I mean, wouldn't it be easier just to do it on the inbound of the SM1 there, or the left SM? Yeah, it would be easier. You're absolutely right, because I would be doing it before routing. Right. But, since okay. I have to apply to a zip entity, I cannot say it's inbound, and there's not a, this is not a zip entity, so I cannot say, for all the calls coming from this... Oh, oh I'm know? sorry, it's not the CM, it's the SIP. Yeah, so that's why I said that in the exercise, we're forced to make it work as outbound. But if this was CM, it would be different because you're absolutely right. If this was CM and this was an H23 phone, now I could say I'm gonna make it work as inbound and say all of the calls coming from this CM are gonna be evaluated to see if the digits need to be modified. And yes, it would be easier because I wouldn't need to create a new dial pattern on session matter because routing would be evaluated after the adaptation takes place and removes the star nine. So in the left SM there, we're going to build a dial pattern for star nine yeah. wildcard, yeah. go to other SM, but then an adaptation on also, that yeah, you got link yeah. that says when you see, you what's see a happening? star nine, kill the star nine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and you got it perfectly. So now, Ugly. since it's gonna work as an outbound adaptation, and now you know that for outbound, routing is applied first, and then the adaptation is applied. So you're gonna have to create a new dial pattern, starting with start nine, that makes session manager route to the other session manager, and then the adaptation is gonna remove the start nine. If we had the flexibility to make it work as inbound, we wouldn't need to create a new dial pattern because the conversion, the, the adaptation would take care of that SAR9, it will remove it, and then routing would be applied. And you really have a routing policy to go to the other lab. You see? You see the, the, the difference? So we wouldn't need to we wouldn't need to configure an incoming adaptation in order to receive There the is volume? no an adaptation only applies to an entity link. To so a SIP entity, to a SIP entity. To a SIP entity. So there's no that incoming isn't a SIP entity, it's a SIP endpoint. So we don't have anything to apply it to. It'd be nice to be able to put it over there, but there is no entity to apply an adaptation to. It's just a phone. Yeah. Okay. So you, you have to make it work as outbound, okay. and you'll have to create a new dial pattern associated to the existing routing policy that you have right now configured to go to the other. New SIP entity. Okay. Let's give it a try. Go to page 26, and it's going to guide you through configuring the adaptation. Okay. Adaptations. 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 Strap digits. Capital S, capital B. <laughs> capital S. Oh, strip digits. Duh. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, module name, you want to use the digit conversion adapter. Help oh, see that? Yeah. What about modular parameter type? We're just leave it blank. Oh, that's fine. No. Leave it alone. Okay. Scroll to digit conversion for, for outbound. outbound. Yep. From F7. Put a star. Matching pattern is star 9. Star 9. Minimum six, maximum six. Right, because that's going to be a six digit number when that gets added. You want to delete the two digits. Delete the first two digits. Add that's it to modify its destination. 
destination. And click commit. Commit. Suicide. Suicide. Navigate to element. Routing. Sip entities. Okay. Sip entities. Mm -hmm. Click on your neighbor's session manager. Let's take our neighbor behind us. Apply the adaptation. Ah, look at that. Strip digits. Mm -hmm. Click commit. That was fast. Who did you do it to? Wayne? Wayne. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention. To so, yeah, lab two, lab one works with lab two, lab three will work with lab four. Okay. <laughs> Uh, go to down three, three with four, four with three, and you guys work here. Lab one Click with on two. New. Put the star nine, or the star right. Pattern is star no. nine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Ah. Min max. Six, maximum six. Oh, okay. Zip domain is all. It's all okay. Wherever we see, scroll to originating locations and yeah. down policies. Okay. Click add. Just you mean click um, apply? Mesh. No, just one lab. Yeah. Just one. No, oh. click, uh, click, click, scroll to originating. Location? Click add. Can you add? Uh, no. Actually, try another lab and you'll probably see that you will need to now dial, uh, use another dial pattern, something like star nine, scroll to three, star nine, locations. two to differentiate, right? right? Yeah, we'd have to move one digit over. Yeah. Let me get back out and let's yeah. go back in. And then routing. Who routing wishes policies. we still had routing DCS policies. between cell oh, uh, or TS? Route test on two. Oh, just doing you? Bottom of the signaling groups. No. Oh, I guess you just want to apply the selected routing policies to all the locations. So go back to dial pattern. Go to, where's our star nine? I, got, I, got I don't know. We didn't, I don't think we committed. Oh, you know what? There's we'll a step missing in step 23. Star After nine. 23, it says apply selected numbers to all our unique locations. Yeah, that was. Uh, actually, that's not. It's missing the one where you add yeah. all the originating locations. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. So hit add right there. You see it? There you go. Got it. Okay. And then click. Click, click on all. Apply. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Uh, Have a routing policies. To all originating. It is originating. So, so don't worry about routing policy. Okay. Oh, no, hey, thanks. And that's it. Hit select. Yeah. Let's yeah, we'll select the entries from both. Okay. So select routing policies. Everything. Okay. Commit. There you go. So there's star nine. Practice making calls to your neighbor's phone. So, okay, star nine twenty two or one. So Here we go. Head down. Because since, since we selected all originating, we probably got star nine thirty two. Yep. Let's try. Yep. That worked too. Yep. Hey there. Okay. Star nine forty two. Yeah, there's Jalen. Use trace SN to analyze. Hey there. Bye there. Oh, look at this, Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. Yeah. Oh, the name's Cash. John Cash. The work? Let me trace it. In lab, let's see, lab one. Where is lab one? Here. Go ahead, place the call in lab one. It's working. Well, then it's yeah. wrong. <laughs> it is that wrong? Not it's what's going on. 
you're sending it to your CM, your own CM first. And so your CM says, hey, there's no one with that. Uh, so your CM says not found. And then you re you're sending it then to lab four. You want to know why? Oh, wait a second. The only thing I see that's different is that for the SIP domain, we have it set to all as opposed to converge1.com. Would that make a difference? No. Well, well, CM is downstream star. Oh. No, 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 but the problem is not in CM. I mean, the problem is that you're sending it to CM. The, so the call is coming from a SIP form. Let's place that call again. I'm tracing again. Okay. Let me see. Can you see there? Yeah, turn off. Oh, God. It's blue. What happened? It's just blue and it's hard to see. Oh, okay. Try it again. There we go, one more time. Oh, I know why. Look at my number change. <laughs> I know why too. I'm <laughs> I know you, 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 you misplaced probably the, the, dial, the new dial pattern. Yeah, but the, the new dial pattern is. Star nine. We, we selected all, so it's, it's going session manager to CM. <laughs> and we should have just selected. Oh. Route to CM2, SM2. We yeah. Yeah. Th that's why it's actually working to all of the labs. Yeah. Yeah. Because you have you try first one. If it doesn't work, you try the other routing policy. Oh. Then you try right. That's okay, why you so have to okay. change it. Okay. And it's okay. You know why? Because the step in the that's the step that was missing in the world. Yeah. The, war, the one where you need to specify the. Right. Right. Okay. Here we go. Nestor, is it here? We just can't find it in the trace. Um, we're watching the trace SM uh -huh. with just sit message. Okay. On, um, and we're not finding <laughs> the adaptation. It's working. We know it's get, It's happening. Yeah. But I'm not able I to see. find it's a point there. in the trace that suggests that it's that happened. Yeah. yeah. Is so it there and I'm not see finding that. it? it no, you'll see it only if you have internal okay. messages. And you'll Who's see apply line? egress adaptation. However. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, even if you don't have that, let me actually, this could be useful, N minus NR minus NS, N minus NO, N minus NA. So notice that even if you don't have, can you see there, yeah. kind of hard? Yeah, that's gonna be a bind. That inability to see the call trace details, whatever it's called. Yeah. In However, I'm about to show you a tool that's gonna that you're gonna like. But here in the trace, if you see the invite, mm -hmm. the request URI has the star, yep. star nine two two, right? right? As well as the oh, there's not yet via certain identity. When you see the invite leaving from, in this case, this session matter and going to session matter two. Take a look at this. Even without opening the invite, I see that the two header still the same. However, the request URI was modified. Mm -hmm. Let's open the message. What I'm saying is that request URI was modified. I no longer see the star now because of the adaptation. The two header, however, was left intact. Still has the star nine. Because session mark doesn't modify the to header or the from header unless you tell session mark to do so. I see. Okay? It just keeps the original information. But usually, SIP entities don't care about the from header or the to header. Instead, they care about the request URI for destination and the P asserted identity for origination. Okay? <laughs> Make sense? It shows that it happened. Yeah. Now, just to finish today, uh, Jesse, were you able to place that call? Did yes. it work? Okay. Yes. Just to finish, I want to show you something called the call routing test tool, which is a way for you to test if your routing policies are well configured or your adaptations are doing whatever they're supposed to do. It's just a test, but it's going to show you the session mark internal. Uh, process decision, decision process, right? Which is kind of similar to what I'm getting to see right now in Trace SM. It's like a list uh, ARS route, cho route chosen. Yeah. 